Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us this morning on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It was a wonderful night and today is also a clear morning. I hope wherever you are, because where I come from, uh, where I came from this morning, it was really clear and bright. Today we're going to be talking about one thing which gives us concern. The National Bureau of Statistics has said that the prices of food items such as beef, rice, beans, onions, yam, and others increased in September as food prices rose to 26.76% in September. Okay, so it's very worrisome. How much are we doing to make sure that food security is at the front burner? We don't have to starve. No matter what we think about our government, we, or whatever we think about doing tomorrow, like my people say, it is the one that is in the stomach that carries the one in the head. So if you cannot have something in your stomach, how can we reason to move on as a country? So if there is deliberate policy that will be done to make sure that we have food security in this country, it'll be good. So we'll be discussing that with Nick Agule this morning on the show. First of all, let's just go to what is trending or what really... Um, uh, caught our interest in the course of the day. So, like I said, or if I have not said it, my name is Nyamgul Agajin. I'm welcoming you on behalf of the entire team uh, to today's edition of the program. Now, Rivers Crisis was what we discussed yesterday on the show, mostly, and we heard um, from an insider telling us what the, uh, the happenings in that state were and debunking some of the uh, rumors that have been going around, for instance, like that, that the chief judge has been removed and so many other people have been removed, removed and he said that, that is not the case and so many other things that he said. You might just want to go back to our edition of uh, the breakfast yesterday and watch what was said by an insider from River State. But today uh, we're interested in the fact that um, Tinubu PDP governor stopped Fabura, Fubara's removal protesters arrested. That is the first story. President Bola Tinubu and the People's Democratic Party governors on Tuesday intervened to stop the impeachment moves against uh, River State Governor Siminalai Fubara. The president conferred with the embattled governor and his predecessor, the minister of the federal capital territory, Nyeso Mbike, at the presidential villa in Abuja. The Bauchi state governor, Bala Mohammed, disclosed this shortly after the Nigeria Police Council met for the first time under the Tinubu administration. Both Wike and Fubara had attended the meeting, which was held at the State House. However, photographs and videos capturing the moment were muffled by security operatives or were said to be muffled by security operatives who threatened any media house that published them with eviction from the presidential villa. Some cameramen uh, said in confidence that while others were asked not to take photographs and videos of the two men, those who had done so before the directive were asked not to publish them. This happened as the police arrested about 120 youths in Port Harcourt for protesting the moves to impeach the governor. Sources say the, the youths had attempted to invade the official residence of the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Martin Amaiule, in Port Harcourt, but they were rep repelled by the police who dispersed them with gunshots. The youths were demanding Amaule's eviction, claiming that he was no longer the House Speaker. The protesters had attempted to pull down the gates to the Speaker's residence while uh, demanding his eviction from the building, but the police quickly responded to the situation and arrested some of them. Now, it was gathered that a stray bullet hit one of the youths who bled profusely and was rushed to the hospital for treatment. Uh, some say he died and some others said he's still undergoing treatment, whatever the case may be, uh, but somebody was hit. Meanwhile, a senior police source confirmed the incident, saying those arrested are about 200, and one of them is the chairman of NYCN, Chijoke Ihumo. Um, according to him, one was seriously injured. The ones arrested are in custody. Uh, an official police source said no fewer than 120 protesters were arrested by the police and reacting to the arrest, the spokesman for the Ijo Youth Council Worldwide, Bedford Benjamin, confirmed the development but said the youths had no intention of attacking Amawule's residence. He said the aggrieved youths only went there on a peaceful protest and condemned the decision of the security agents to fire at them. 
Benjamin said there was an unconfirmed report that someone was killed by the bullets, adding that many of the protesters sustained injuries. He said one of the youths and chairman of the National Youth Council of Nigeria River State Chapter, Ihumo, and many others were arrested and thrown into a cell. We keep asking the question, in a, in a moment of protest, a protest that ordinarily uh, starts out as a peaceful protest, shooting at the people, will it, is it the best move to be taken by security agencies? Are there no, no other ways to make sure that the uh, protesters are either repelled or arrested or whatever else can be done in a civil way to them? So if this person who was shot and was bleeding actually dies, then the question will be, was it right for the police to kill that person because uh, hey, what, what were they really doing that was such a threat that the police could not have uh, uh, quelled whatever threat it was uh, without using live bullets on people. Whatever the case may be, uh, we don't need two sides of the story because the person, if he dies, will not have his own side of the story told ever again because he's gone. So the police should be careful what they do in terms of protest. Maybe if they have to train and retrain and do whatever they need to do to know how to handle protests, that's why they are police. That's why they are the only ones qualified to be in the civil society to take care of people and stop uh, violence and other things that happen in the civil society. Okay, so the next uh, story that we were interested in is the fact that uh, 2.176 trillion Naira uh, 2023 supplementary budget proposal by President Bola Tinubu has been submitted to the House of Representatives uh, since on Tuesday and pri it prioritized the security of Nigerians and their property as defense got the highest allocation of 476.543 billion naira. We've been carrying this story all along, but people are still asking oh, what's the rationale behind uh, the, um, the budget, a uh, supplementary budget being given, and the people are suffering how much of this money is coming to the people who need to feed. So given the activities of bandits and other criminal elements in the country in the past decade, this is hardly surprising. The proposal is, however, subject to the approval of the National Assembly, and President Tinubu's pledge to make every part of Nigeria safe for habitation has been underlined by the huge allocation for the defense of the nation's territorial integrity. Works was allocated 300 billion naira, while the Minister of Agriculture and Food Security got 200 billion naira. Interestingly, housing got 100 billion naira. The Federal Capital Territory Administration got 100 billion naira, while Police Command and allocation got um, 50 billion naira. Also included in the supplementary appropriation bill are service-wide votes, which were allocated 615 billion naira. Capital supplementation uh, got 210 billion naira, while state house 200, uh, 28 billion naira. Others include Department of State Services, 49 billion naira, Office of the National Security Advisor, 29.7 billion naira, and Independent National Electoral Commission had 18 billion naira for the conduct of the off circle governorship election in Bayelsa State, Kogi, and Imo States on November 11. 100 billion for housing, 100 billion for federal capital territory. So housing throughout the country got 100 or got the same as the federal capital territory. And uh, we had a, a security expert the other day, Monday I think, uh, that was talking about um, security, looking at security in 2024, what the government has to look out for. And while everybody was expecting him to talk about the uh, system, the tra strategy, maybe using technology and all that, yes, he did say something like that. But he said the major thing is to make sure that people, less and less people get into crime because people are now hungry, people are now jobless, people are finding it difficult to feed. And that's why security will always be an issue until government addresses these issues. Uh, then uh, the, the security situation will go beyond just buying superior firepower or any other thing that they want to do. So, uh, so 10 people go into stealing because they cannot feed and then you give the 10 people, um, you give the security uh, men guns to gun them down 
and uh, they, their families are still hungry. Other people still rise from those families and become thieves or something. So he, in his own opinion, said that it was better for the federal government to address the issues why people are entering crime in the first place before even thinking about firepower. So the federal government has also revealed plans to introduce um, uh, one million compressed natural gas-powered vehicles, CNG, powered vehicles by 2027. That is at the end of this tenure and the beginning of the next. The announcement was made by the Special Assistant to the President on Special Duties and Domestic Affairs, Toyin Subaru, during a stakeholders meeting held on Sunday at the Bank of Industry headquarters in Abuja. As part of this initiative, Subaru disclosed that 11,500 CNG powered buses are expected to be deployed this week. Um, this move aims to address transportation challenges exacerbated by recent subsidy removal, providing a viable solution to the public. The federal government assured that the introduction of CNG buses will significantly lower the prices of CNG to 230 per kilogram, making it an affordable and eco-friendly option for the citizens. Subaru emphasized that the integration of the CNG-powered mass transit buses was a will enable Nigerians to save up to two-thirds of their transportation costs. Okay, we like information like that. What Lagos State government is doing, for instance, is very laudable. If you have the power or the, the opportunity to have a cowrie card and you are on the route where the BRT buses are applying, then you find out that you're paying like half of the uh, transportation cost every day to work. So instead of paying a thousand naira, maybe you end up paying 500 naira to where you're going. And that is really laudable. The only problem is that so many routes in these Lagos still lack uh, that opportunity to board BRT buses. I always use the example of Agbara Axis to even the historical site of uh, Badagri, where we don't have BRT reaching there. We, we know that the train gets to mile two, the BRT buses also get, also get to mile two. I haven't seen, if, if there are, I haven't seen any, any buses moving beyond mile two to areas like Agbara and uh, Badagri. And everybody wants to visit Bad Badagri, and it's going to be better if we all have a very easy means of getting to that point. We understand that there's a possibility the trains will get to uh, Badagri, and the trains will also get to Aja and other parts of Lagos, all up on to um, Dangote uh, Refinery and beyond that, Ekwe and all that those access. But until that is done, uh, what are the palliatives? I know that when you call palliatives nowadays in Nigeria, people think about rice and beans and all things that are being distributed uh, because of the fuel subsidy removal. But what are the uh, interim measures that are going to be put in place to make sure that the people on those axes will also enjoy, uh, have a fresh breath like some of us uh, on the mainland and other parts of uh, Lagos are enjoying? So if there are more buses, PRT buses, there are more trains, we hope that the red line will come on as soon as possible, just like the blue line has, and people are enjoying it. Even though it's just like four coaches, but they, the ride is always beautiful for now. We do hope that it will not uh, degenerate or deteriorate into what we find some of the BRT buses now uh, becoming. In those days, people used to wear sweatshirts when they're entering BRT buses because it was always cool. There was AC. Now all the windows are open because there's no AC anymore. It is very hot inside there. Still, it is um, better than the crowded uh, commercial buses, ordinary yellow buses that ply the roads. You will find more comfort, even though sometimes the people who are standing on these buses are more than the people sitting. Uh, the standing capacity is exceeded. Uh, the seating capacity cannot be exceeded because the seats are uh, customized just for one person. You cannot squeeze in another person in there. But the people who stand sometimes are more than the people who sit. If this is the, the case that should have been, well, I don't know. In the time of COVID even, we still had situations where people had to crowd these buses because, you know, they have to save some money and they have found a way of saving the money. So we have 
um, or every every reason to go on crowd day if that is the excuse that we're going to give. So there should be more buses and there should be more routes opened to these BRT buses. The train should not take another 16 or 20 years to come up. It should come up very soon. And uh, all the people are saying, especially as uh, we hear that Ogun State and Lagos State are collaborating to make sure that the rail lines also run to Ogun, then it will be a very, very laudable project. And we're hoping that that will be done deliberately and not wait to 2027. We wish that these 1 million buses, CNG buses, that we're, they're talking about 2027, uh, would come earlier than 2027. 2027 is a full tenor of the present administration and it is in the present administration that the fuel subsidy was removed and people will remember this administration for that and I'm not sure it's going to be a good memory for them. So I, I wish the one million buses were just now because it will, it will make us uh, travel easier so if I want to go to maybe Sokoto and I have a bus, a CNG bus provided by the federal government that will take me as far as Abuja and then from Abuja I go to Sokoto uh, connecting, not flight this time, but connecting buses that will take us to wherever we're going to. It will be a very, very laudable thing. Well, Rome, like they say, was not built in a day. We do hope that our own Rome will not take so many days will not take so many years. Um, it shouldn't be like God created one day, uh, one thing today, and maybe it took a thousand years before he created another thing, like people say the seven days of God may have been 7,000 years. Anyway, uh, we're still here. It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We want to take a break, and when we return, we hope to be looking at the papers. Once again, oh, I have not said it before, but um, welcome to a new month. It's November. That means you have just one month, and after that, it's Christmas. Stay with us. <laughs>